Are you always coming up with ideas? Do you marvel at successful business owners? Do you hate being told what to do? Ever take things apart just to see how they work? Are you a dreamer? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, this podcast is for you. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Enclave with Kevin Wortham. The podcast that focuses on building, maintaining, pivoting, planning, and investing in you, the entrepreneur. But first, a word from our sponsor. Tapes' Specialties is the world leader in tape manufacturing and specialty conversion with over 40 years of experience. In addition to our pro brand of high-quality specialty adhesive tapes, we provide contract converting services that help improve your profitability, streamline your supply chain, and reduce inventory cost. We offer the most complete range of converting capabilities in the industry, such as... Cloth tape, double coated tape, specialty tape, paper tape, masking tape, vinyl tape, carton sealing tape, adhesive transfer tape, duct tape, phone tape, electrical tape, filament tape, foil tape, reflective tape. And the tape just keeps on rolling. Visit us online today at www.protapes.com or call us at 800 345 Pro Tapes, it's just how we roll. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another fantastic episode of the Entrepreneur Enclave, Life's Coming Attraction. I am your host, Kevin Wortham. Man, I am so excited. I got my brother, Keith, on the phone. Talk to me, brother. How are you doing today? Kev, Kev, what's going on, brother? How are you? I am doing well, doctor. So we're going to jump right into it because uh, I know you've got so much information you want to share with us. So. I think about uh, two years ago, yeah. three, three years ago, you've been retired, right? Yeah, I retired in 2019. Okay, and so since that time, what have you done with all your free time, brother? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. What I did was use the most of it, Yes. and that is relax as much as possible. Yes, you know, sir. I went 30 years of, uh, I guess, high-intensity work. Yes, yes. Ment- mentally, I would say. So uh, the first two years, you know, and, you know, combined with COVID, I pretty much relaxed. And now I'm um, just trying to get out a little more and, and you know, enjoy life a little more. Because I know recently <laughs> you uh, started a podcast, right? Yeah, I sure did. Um, Strong Perspectives Podcast. And and what was the impetus behind starting that, brother? Well, the two main reasons. First yes. and foremost, I have uh, my two brothers. You know, they they're like my best friends, and yes. we we are we're we're different parts. Of, you know, one is in D.C. area, uh, one still back in Michigan. I'm down here in North Carolina. Yes. So yeah, it was something to do with those guys. You know, mm-hmm. what I mean, we we okay. we grew up very close. And, and, and close knit, you know, so it, it gave me opportunity to see their faces and, you know, just to interact with them. And then the second one, and, and it really and truly compelled me to do it, was I've always, you know, on my downtime when I worked, uh, I, I started to get into podcasts, yes. all kinds of podcasts, because I, I love listening to other people's opinions about things. And just, you know, just getting immersed in it, right? And when I retired, I started to slow down. And I guess it something started, it felt like it was missing. And then I realized what it was. It okay. was my own okay. voice. It was my own voice. I wanted to hear my own voice. Okay. You know, okay. not particularly uh, what I said is how I said it. Okay. Responding okay. to whatever we're talking about, and so and you so know. a lot, a lot of what you were responding to was, I guess, the voice. Well, not so much the voice, but what you were hearing that was on topic, right? What was going that, around you every day? I think it's the everyday thing, but what we, you know, on our podcast, um, we what we do is we give ourselves and other people opportunities to speak their mind. Yes. And I'm not talking yeah. about the controversial. And so we, 
so they won't feel like they're on the spot or feeling ambushed. But I'm talking about, you know, how when you and I got together after school, which was very, very uh, few and far between, but we sat down and we chopped it up. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? So that's what my, our our podcast really concentrates on is everyday uh, conversations, even if it's on current events, or growing up, or what it, what what influenced us as we grew up. Okay, and who brings up the topics for that for that podcast that day? What we do is the day before. Well, we, I try to you know this is a grassroots thing, and I, I, I'm learning from scratch. But what we do is that the day before because we we try to we try to go live uh, every Friday at seven thirty. Yes, you know yeah. on Facebook and our YouTube channel. And the Thursday, like today, later on tonight, we have a production meeting. And I put lack of a better word, but a production meeting where, you know, my brothers and and what, whoever guests that we have on, yes, we sit down and we talk about, you know, what we want to talk about for the day. You know what I mean? But the main thing is, and we what we do is we start every guest in the beginning, we want them to talk about themselves. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? What influenced their upbringing and, you know, what brought them to this point? Yes, sir. All right. That, now, that's a that's a good segue for us to start all over. So you and I met at Pitt <laughs> <laughs> over over 30 years ago, right? Yes, sir. And yes, so sir. what influenced your decision to go to Pitt? I, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Um I was highly recruited in football and basketball. Yes. But I'm a Michigan guy, so football was out of the question because playoff time, it was in the middle of the winter, and we didn't have no inside uh, practice field. So. <laughs> <laughs> you can't look. Hey, Cam, you're a football player. Yes, sir. So, then, you know, game day, you don't mind whatever it is. It could be a hurricane. You don't care. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? <laughs> but practice, you know <laughs> – Especially, uh, you know, early November, mid-November. Yeah. You know, Michigan, you either had snow or it was, you know, below uh, zero. Yes, so, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, um, I, I probably drifted towards basketball because I loved it. Yes. You know, yes. and and I just so happened to get a growth growth spurt my uh, freshman year and grew to six seven, and so I taught myself how to play, wow. and. Wow. What ended up happening was uh, we did great once I uh, once I started for junior senior year. Our teams, were, you know, traditionally our team I played for Ypsilanti High School yes. in Michigan. Our team traditionally was a powerhouse in the state, so gotcha. Gotcha. did well, you know, and became known. Went to a couple camps, and Pitt just came in, and started to recruit me, and I was being recruited pretty much everywhere. For basketball and football. Yes. And it was nineteen eighty two when North Carolina played uh played Georgetown in the national championship. Patrick yes. Ewing yes. and all those guys. Yes. And we were <laughs> what's so funny about it, we were sitting in a coach's house that was recruiting us. Yes. So it was this funny I'm sitting there and I knew Pitt it would my freshman year would be their first year in the Big East. Okay. So okay. it was history. If I decided to go to Pitt, Pitt, that was part of history because we were going into a Big East, that Big East conference. It was a powerhouse conference. Yes, so it was. We're, we're sitting there watching North Carolina, and you know it was a great game. And you think about it, we saw history. Michael Jordan yes. as a freshman, yes. you know, and hitting the big shot. And But I was rooting for Georgetown. John Thompson was my guy. Got gotcha. you. You know what I mean? I read in high school, I read his autobiography, his and Bill Russell's autobiography. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. it motivated me. I just, you know, to, to, it made me feel proud to be a, a big man. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, at that time um, in, the, in our country, it was, you know, we was all stereotyped. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. 
So I was a big black man. Yeah. So yeah. angry. angry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Always angry. Even though you're passionate, they call it anger. Yeah. So yeah. And then we had reason to be angry too, Ken. So uh, come on, but, man. Come, come on. on man. <laughs> yeah. So what ended up happening was uh, we're watching the game, and I knew Pitt was recruiting me. Yes. And I was so I Georgetown didn't come in rec- to recruit me to after I decided to go to Pitt. Okay. But that night, I said, if I get to play against those guys, yes, sir, I would feel good. Yes, I would sir. love yes, to sir. do that. That 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 was that was my that's how I made my decision to go to Pitt. Wow, well, that's real. I'm, that's real. I am so glad that you did that in terms of basketball because I did not want to see you on the football field either. <laughs> <laughs> hey, love. But hey, hey, Kel, we both know, we both know, the kid is a football school and will always be one. So. Oh, no question. But but listen, <laughs> while you were there, you guys brought some thunder, brother. Oh my God! So now you're you're at Pitt, and uh, now where are you staying? Which dorms were you staying in? I stayed my first two years. I stayed in. Tower C. Okay. Did on you, the sixth floor. Did you ever did you ever come to Lothrop? Um every once in a while if I, I saw yeah, if I went to go uh if I went to go um like visit a teammate. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the old head stayed in Lothrop. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> look. And, and the thing about it was, everybody kept saying, "Hey, man, this is where you need to be. This is where you need to be." Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and um, but that's that's really this. A couple, my first two years, that was only a couple times that I were I was there. Got you, got you. We had we had a blast in Lothrop, man. So, <laughs> m- m- listen, I'm trying to tell you. But so, yes, sir. So you were you were at Pitt. You're doing your basketball thing. At any point. At any point, did you think that this is what a black man should do? Or did you think that you wanted to do more beyond the basketball? You wanted them to see you more? I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, to be perfectly honest with you, Kev, yes, uh, my parents my parents raised me and my brothers to be what we wanted to be and more. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Because ever since when I was a child, my mother and father, especially my mother, took me to Cause you gotta think about. It. I was born in '64. Yes. So those those uh, pro black radical meetings, I was going to those in Detroit. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Yes. We, me and my brothers, went to those things. Yes. And the education, the books, the real history. Yes. We were reading those things. You see what I mean? I and you. my parents conditioned condition us to be who we are and beyond, because we always understood that. It's not just about our lives. It's the lives of our our our, our children that, that follow us and their children and so on and so on. Yes. You know what I mean? So yes. what I wanted, yeah, of course I wanted to go to the NBA if I wouldn't have got a blessed to do that. Yes. You know what I mean? But the thing about it is I wanted more, whatever whatever came. Yes. Because, I, you know, I wanted to get into business, you know, and own different kinds of businesses, stores, gas stations, bars. Yes. You know, that that was always my thing, right? And this is why I love going to bars, period, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah. I still do to this day. <laughs> <laughs> to this day. I love the atmosphere. Yeah. But the thing about it is I switched up, which I regret to this day, because I went to school for business, yes. right? Yeah. But, you know, the hectic schedule, what I ended up doing, but it, it ended up serving me, but I moved from um, moving toward the business part of it to go to, uh, you know, the more of law and administration. So, so I got my degree in administration of justice. Yes. You know what I mean? So what it ended up doing was, and it minor in juvenile justice, so it what ended up happening was it freed my time up for yes. basketball. Yes. Gotcha. And I kind of regret that, but then again, I don't because I feel as though throughout my whole career in it, I've influenced a lot of people. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Because I understood coming from the other side that people are, you know, in the business of criminality. 
Yes. Yes. For various reasons. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. you know, just looking at it from that point of view, understanding, you know, I could go into the history of my family, you know, my father, where he had a dual life. You know, he went to work every single day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, he held on to those streets, too. You know what I mean? Oh, so, wow. you know, so my brothers and I, uh, myself, we was exposed to all of that. Got you. You know what I mean? This is why people always say to me, why are you so calm when, when all hell is breaking loose, when we're in <laughs> school and, and when I'm on the job? I'm like, man, this is something that I'm used to. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was never, yeah, if you know anything, if you, if you remember anything about me, Kev, I was always even killed. Yes, you, you were. You know what I'm saying? Because that, that, you know, that's what it is, you know, understanding what life is. But, but but let's yeah, but, 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 but let's yeah, not but let's not let's not forget though uh, if I understand correctly when you were doing law law enforcement you were a sheriff's deputy yes sir so yes, here sir. you are six ten six eleven with a gun <laughs> <laughs> no no yeah hey no if I was six if I would be shocked if I was six ten but you know I'm six nine don't care okay. you're right. <laughs> and, and, and you know, you know what's so funny about it is, is people uh, always assume that I would have it because you know I was a fighter. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't like it wasn't like you know how you, I, I I learned early in my career to take my ego out of it yes, and just be a professional. Yes, you know what I mean because your ego gets you in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Keep so, this. Listen, you could have left your ego home many a day just, just showing up at 6'9 with a gun. Yeah, it helped. It Officer, helped. I'll do whatever you need me to do. <laughs> you know, and see, and, and that's the thing about it is what I, what I did was I learned how to treat people. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Yes, because sir. knowing the difference between the real truth that there is the black community yes. and there are criminals. Yes. I don't yeah. blend the two. Yes. And you run into people that blend the two, man. Okay. Maybe it's because of, you know, not getting too, you know, uh, uh, too political or too, it's, it's the conditioning of it. It's like, you know, I, I'll tell you what, this, 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 this is a perfect example of this. When you go to, you know, where, where you grew up at, Kev, right? Yes. And say your city has a reputation. Yes, sir. That, oh, it's a bad place, man. Don't go, don't go to that city, right? Yes. And really and truly, and this is God's honest truth, because I know personally, there's only two streets in the entire city that you don't have no business being on. Yes, sir. But the whole city has the reputation yes. of being bad. Yes. You know what I'm yes. saying? So I liken that to our community. Okay. Where there's one to two percent that wanna be criminals. Yes. That's what they want to be. Yes. Right? But the rest of us, what we want is life, a better life for ourselves. Yes. You know? That's all. No, no, I you know so same yeah, way. go ahead. No, no, no. You, you, it, it said, it said perfectly, man. I think that oftentimes, right, we confuse who we are with where we are, and I think that, that where we are is not indicative as to where we belong. If that, if that makes any sense, and I makes sense. And I think that uh, when you talk about that two percent, like in Trenton, Trenton is relatively small, but but they but they focus on the bad part, maybe a few streets, a few individuals, and that kind of destroys the whole, the whole outlook and the whole feel for Trenton. So then people hear Trenton, and because they understand those two streets, they think yes. everything is bad. But that's, but that's yeah. not where we are, and that's not the vision that we want for the city. So I, I get that. I understand that. But yeah. uh, So let me, let me ask this question, because we're going to jump all over the place if you don't mind. Oh, I, listen, you my, you my man, so you know how we do. Cool, cool. So when you say you enjoyed bars, I remember our first reconnection, you were you were in Philly, and we, yeah. went, we went down, we met at Lou's and Chews. Lou and Chews, <laughs> baby! <laughs> <laughs> man, 
man. Oh yeah. Oh I, yeah. I enjoyed myself because that used to be my hangout, man. That was that was like you know, Thug Central, but I enjoyed that too, yeah. man. So yeah. I I understand yeah. what you're saying. You have to know how to navigate that that area, and if you're not familiar, yeah, you can get your ass whooped. But if you're familiar, you familiar, everybody's at peace. Everybody comes for a good time, right? So that was yeah. Everybody, everybody comes for the, the, this to be in that personal space. Absolutely, I'm not gonna invade yours. Don't invade mine. Exactly. Who who was while you were at Pitt? Uh, in, in terms of the basketball scene, which team gave you your deepest and hardest challenge? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. My four years at Pitt, we beat Georgetown twice. Yes. We beat, um, I think we, I want to say Georgetown, but to be perfectly honest, it would be Syracuse. Wow! Why it would, be, it would it would be Syracuse because we could never beat those guys, man. Okay. We could never beat them. Okay. You know, we beat them once my freshman year. Yeah. And I hit a I hit a big shot. It was on you know it was one of the few times that I played because our center, um, Trent Williams, was in foul trouble. Yeah. So I was in the game. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Freshman year, I didn't play. I played, but I didn't play like I wanted to. Yes, sir. And I hit a crucial shot on the baseline. Coach Chipman was like, he saw me pull him, no, 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 he <laughs> oh yeah, good shot, good shot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and I looked at him like, I wouldn't give a damn, man. I need to be on this floor. Yes, sir. But <laughs> we beat them one time. Yes, sir. And, and, and every time we went to the Carrier Dome, it was, they were close games. Yes, sir. And we had the opportunity to beat them, but we never pulled it out. Wow. We never pulled it out. So yeah. it would be Syracuse. Everybody else, it was a back and forth thing, okay. you know? Okay. Now, so so now with your with your podcast calling Being Strong Perspective, have you thought about doing a reunion conversation with some of your former fellow uh, Pitt basketball alum? You know, I think – I I had that in mind before I started the actual podcast. Yes. And we had a Zoom, you know, I organized a Zoom yes. um call and it was it was able to you know, everybody's busy, man, and I'm sure you understand. Absolutely. I'm I'm really and you know, just a side note, I'm jealous of you guys because spring game, you know what I'm saying? All of you, you you know, all your people come back. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? Yes. You know, I think we have something like that in February maybe. That you know, we but I haven't had a chance to get back because I had a son that plays played basketball and all of that. So I, you know, schedules is messed up. But we did a Zoom call. Yes. And, and I did it for it was about six months. Yes. And reconnected with a lot of guys, man. Okay. With a lot of guys, and you know the thing about it when it comes to and 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 my 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 uh. Basketball brethren will tell you this. Yes. Is we always feel like we're too busy. <laughs> you know wow. what I'm saying? And that's not a bad thing. Yeah, no, it's not a yet. bad thing. It's just, you know, we, 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 we're rushing. We're going through life. And then another thing is I was always close to all my guys. Yes. Even the guys, because I stayed in Pittsburgh till 95. Okay. So okay. it became my home. Yes. So. I always got acquainted with the, you know, the guys who were playing, who were playing for Pitt at the time. Yes. So I've made some great connections. Okay. You know what I mean? I kind of, I, I kind of became me and Demetrius kind of became the OGs, man. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So I wanted to give them that something that I never got when I was at Pitt. Okay. Someone to talk to. Got you. You see what I'm saying? Someone to just chop it up with. You know, because I understood what they were going through. Yes. You know what I mean? So because of that, I've got a lot of, when I see guys, it's like, we, we you know, it's like when, when we were younger, like yeah. because I was being earnest with them. There was, was no fakeness about it because yeah, yeah. I, under, I understood, even though there were different coaches, I still understood the pressure that they was going through. 
Okay. But to answer your question, yes, yes, but it's it's the thing about it is is trying to get everybody in place to do so. Got you. Well, I, listen, I would encourage you to do, if not everybody, to do a smaller group, man, because I think that what you're doing with your brothers and to get some former basketball alum to to participate. That would be fantastic, man, because I would I would love to hear where they are collectively as you're facilitating that conversation, because I, I'm quite sure they're going to give a strong perspective as to where they are, some of the challenges that they had to go through and overcome to be black men where they are today. And it, I, exactly. So I, I encourage even if you can just get two at a time, brother, I think that would be fantastic because that you know what? That's a good idea. I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> Yo, listen, like I said, it's um. It's 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 on the back burner. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Because there's a couple guys that, you know, you know, Curtis is doing well for yes. himself. You know, yes. just to name a few. Uh, um, um, Orlando Antigua is doing. Well. I mean, but we have a lot of guys doing well. Joey David is doing well. You know, John Bland, the uh, Daryl Shepard. It's it's so many guys that's doing well. Yeah, yeah. And 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 living, you know, and, and I, I'm sure you could you could do the same with your guys. You Absolutely. see what I mean? Absolutely. It's just, I think, and 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 I'm gonna be real earnest when I say this, man. Just from the sport, I, I'm not, I'm I'm just gonna say sports, but just the fact that we, yes, in that period of time in our twenties, the people that we know and we met, yes. We don't appreciate that enough because what it did was we saw and ran into people from every every region in America. Absolutely. You know, and we found out that every, we think the same, but there's some slight differences, Absolutely. and it kind of shaped us. It kind of shaped us as who, what kind of people we are. Yeah, yeah. Now, now speaking, now, speaking as uh, slight uh, difference, slight. which stadium? Or which arena was the best arena for you to play in? I, hey, look, I told you that Syracuse was a bane of my my uh, existence. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'll give you two. Okay. Syracuse, the Carrier Dome. Oh, okay. my God. Chad, wow. you understand my freshman year was the first year, our first year in the Big East. Yes, So in the So when, when we played in the Carrier Dome, they went to one end zone. Okay. And they put the baskets down there, right? Yeah. We were on ESPN. This is when, you know, everybody was jockeying because you know, the Big East was hot. Yes, sir. So every so we was on television. My freshman year, we were on television for uh for thirty six games. Whoa. ESPN, TNT, TBS. Yes. You know, local stations. We thir- I'm serious. I, that's God's honest truth. So what in not thirty six? I'll say about twenty six. Gotcha. Exaggerated, you know, old man exaggeration. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> when, when we <laughs> when we went out there, right? It was twenty four thousand people. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, now understand that's not a lot for you. You're a football player. Yeah, yeah. So, but understand basketball. That's a lot. That's a lot. And they all you know hate saying? you. And they all hate yeah. you. <laughs> so, so what the but the Syracuse crowd did, and you can ask. Look, matter of fact, next time you talk to Charles, yes. ask him this. We were warming up. Yes. Pre-game. Yes. And if I, I might say, out of the twenty-four thousand, at least fifteen thousand was crowded around the court. Right. Wow. Watching us warm up. Yes. And they have four speakers. Yes. In each corner. Yes. And they and they play and you know back in them days when you know when we was there they didn't play uh, rap music and hip hop in Pittsburgh right Yeah yeah. They were playing all the latest stuff while we was warming up. It was <laughs> the craziest. It was <laughs> Cav. It was crazy. Yeah yeah. Right. And that's one the Carrier Dome. And then the second one, yes, we only played in it once, okay. but it was the Palestra in Philly. Wow! Oh my God! Old hey, look, old gym, but when you talking about the energy, now I can say you know 
Uh, it's a no brainer when when I talk about Madison Madison Square Garden. I was going to ask you. That's about a that. no brainer. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? That's a no brainer. I you know, I was just talking about the, the the other opponents' arenas. Madison Square, you know, that's hollow ground when it came to basketball. Yes, sir. Yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you know that's why I didn't even mention the cat because you know that's a no brainer. But but the Palestra. Yes. Oh my God, man! We played in it <laughs> once, and. I've been trying to find this 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 VC this VCR tape. Yes. But all right, look, this is when this was the year that uh Villanova won the national championship, right? Okay. And it was the first time we played them. Okay. And I was in the doghouse okay. unnecessarily. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm telling you, I dunked on Ed Pickney four times in that game. What? Oh, Four man. times. Wow. No, Kev. Kev, I need to, I need to find it. I've been looking for that thing my whole life. Wow. And I've been I, I went to pit a couple times trying to find it. But four times because I was angry. Yes. Because the thing about it was I was a power forward. Yes. Right? But I had to I was six nine. Yes. And I had to play center. They told me, look, you come when you come to pit. You got to play center one year, yeah. and after that, we're going to bring somebody in, a seven-footer in, and you'll be power forward for the rest of your career. They wow. never did. Wow. So guess who got blamed for Pitt not achieving, you know, not achieving the the, the highest? It, it was me. Brother I Keith. mean, I was, get, I was getting hate mail. Okay. Getting hate mail, all of that. Wow. Yeah, it's real, but. That's Guess what? Yeah, I was yeah. raised. I was raised by my mother and father, John and Margie Armstrong. Yes, sir. To be strong, and yes, that's sir. what I did. And, and and we never knew the difference, right? Never knew the difference. You were just a cool, yeah, calm cat on on campus, right? I like that. That, that. that was it, man. Yeah. Now, now you being a basketball player, uh, do you think you were shielded from some of the social injustices? that might have been going around the country and going around the campus at that time? you think you might have been shielded from that? Well, I'll tell you what, man. Um, is it easy to be? Because that's a good question, Ken. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is it easy to be if you allow yourself to be that way? Got you. You know what I'm saying? But see, the way I was raised, I couldn't. Okay. I couldn't do that. Got you. And it made my stay at Pitt a little... It made it harder than it should have been. Gotcha. Had I, had I, and there's nothing wrong with coming to get your education and, and, and getting the most out of it. Yes. So that's, that's not what I'm speaking on. I'm speaking on that you, you know, they did, they had a problem with you speaking up. Yes. You know what I mean? Because you remember, you know, I know you remember Five Panthers Soul. Uh, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> you remember when we, we, when we got on the, uh, Mandela yes, situation. Absolutely. And we all plan to, you know, go go march because they, the students had organized a march in yes. front of the cathedral. Yes. Right? Yes. And this was right before it, it just so happened, it was right before practice. Yes. Right? And and that's where I could catch the campus bus to go up. So I'm with it because every you know during the meeting the night before, what what was everybody saying, Ken? Oh yeah, yeah we there. We there. You know we're gonna saying? protest. We're gonna protest. Yeah, we yeah. we gonna protest, right? Yeah, yeah. So I get there. And I see people walking. Yeah. You know, they're walking in circles and all that. I get in because I'm like, yo, I'm a man of my word. Yes. This is what I'm gonna do. Yes. Right? And I don't know. See, this is what I'm saying to you. I don't know if other people came at other times. So this is not this is not an indictment on anybody else. Yes. I know what I did, right? Yes. The next day I was called into the office. Wow. And I was asked, because I remember when Keith Tinsley, when we was on that Zoom call that you, you know, the, the, on the side note, when we was on the Zoom call that you you, you invited me on, when you was with your guy. Yeah, yeah. Where, um, the poll. <laughs> Remember when Keith said that they brought him in to speak to, I guess, the uh, the, the, the school president and all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember when he mentioned that? Yep. Well, he when he was there, I was in the line, in the okay. circle. Got you. And it got reported back, right? And, you know, I figured we're in college. 
So, you know, we got the right to do that kind of thing, voice ourselves, right? <laughs> but no, no, uh, we don't. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, we didn't. Yeah. This is what I was told. Yeah. yeah, I was told that I need to be lucky to have this, and I don't know why you think you have the nerve, why you got the nerve to get up here. And all I did was say, hey, listen, I thought that I, you know, I had the right to at least do that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Then I was labeled for the rest of my time at Pitt. Wow, man. And, and I, you know, and I got paid, I got paid, you know, to be honest with you, you know how, and you might be familiar with this, how alumni, once we graduate, yeah. alumni kind of give us a little push and all this. Yeah, yeah. I'm told, I was told afterwards, this year is afterwards, that a couple of alumni saying, it was like telling, saying, no, we're not messing with him. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you, you messing with somebody money, yeah, because Pitt Pitt was very is a very powerful corporation. You, <laughs> you know were, what I'm saying? You were too black, too strong. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and the thing about it was, it was more my presence yes. more than anything. Yes. And I only went one or two times around before the bus came because yeah. I knew I had to get up to practice. <laughs> But I'm a man of my word, though, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, Keith? You walk around two times and damn, you ostracize. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, here's the thing, though. Yes. You know, when I look back at it. Yes. Um, growth, man. Absolutely. On my part, you know, just understanding where the world was and, and, and me figuring out that, yo. Yes. You know, I was taught well to at least, you know, feel a certain way. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Now, now in your in your time at Pitt, what you, what would you have changed differently to be for Pitt to be more welcoming to you? I think, to be perfectly honest with you, yes, is no, nothing that I could have changed. The Pitt, I could have kept Pitt changed towards me. Okay. Because what I was was a feisty. Like I'm grown. My my dad gave me permission to be grown. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But also, when you think you're grown, you just think you can just go in like a bull in a china shop and just yes. break. You know what I mean? Everything is cool. Yeah. So to answer your question, I would change something in myself. Okay. And what I would change in myself is is to be who I was and to be able to soak in, to be able to help other people conform to these things because that's what I've always done yes. with my teammates and with other people yes. is, is to see, to see my place in things and what I can do. Yes. You see what I'm saying? I got you. Because I would, I would rather be more awakened to my possibilities. Yes more than what somebody could give me to make me feel comfortable. Got you. You know what I mean? Got because you. to be honest with you, Kev, make me uncomfortable because guess what? I'm going to figure out how to be comfortable. Yes, sir. And it's going to last me It's going to last me for the rest of my life. Yes, sir. I like that, man. That's the strong perspective. I love that. I love it. Yes, sir. I love it. So, so you're, wrapping up your, you're wrapping up your collegiate career. I remember you had a party. Because you didn't go pro, you didn't you you did you, you didn't go pro for basketball, but you went pro for football. How did that happen, bro? I I tell you, it's 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 a crazy story. Yeah, we um we played Xavier in my senior year. We played Xavier in Cincinnati. Yes, and the Cincinnati defensive line coach played. In the sixties, he played basketball yes. at Ohio State, but he played football too. Okay, so he was a basketball fan, so he watched us. Yes, you know yes. he watched us play against Xavier, and I think we beat them. Okay, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, or well, we might have lost, but but the thing about it is, he saw me. Yes, you know at that time, Chad, you remember I was six nine, two fifty. I thought you were heavier than that, Keith. No, it was, it was 250. Okay. It was 250. 
I didn't get heavier until you remember my after I finished basketball, I was working out with you guys. Yes, sir. I remember that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's when I started to get heavier, put on muscle, right? Yes. And you know, I used to run a a, a four six forty. Wow. You know wow. what I'm saying? That, yes, sir. That, that that's that football in me. So, yes, sir. So he saw me running up and down the court, and you remember the way if if you ever. Remember, you remember how I used to play. I was full speed trying to, because I, I, look, I'm trying to get the ball. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so he watched me, and he called me up in my dorm one day. I thought it was a joke. He said, look, I'm going to be in town. He said, I watched you play. And then he remembered me, he remembered my reputation in high school. Yes. You see what I'm saying? You know, as far as football is concerned, right? So. He said, I'm gonna come up, I'm coming up and I'm working you out. I'm gonna see if you, you know, if you have what it takes. You know, I was I did the shuttle drill, I did a, a couple of random forty, I did a couple of things, right? Yeah, yeah. For him. And he said, Look, we're gonna look, if I is it is it okay if we draft you in the last round? What? Draft yeah. me? And I <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, I'm looking at him like, okay. He said, I'm he said, I'm so excited about you. I remember to this day. I said, "I'm so excited about you." Yes. Um, do you mind? Are you going to be a basketball? I said, "I don't know." Yes. He said, "Well, listen, draft day. I'm going to call you." Yes. If you're ready, you know what I mean. Yes. And to make it so bad during the draft, I was I wasn't thinking about all of that, man. <laughs> right. So, but I didn't get drafted. What I ended up doing was. Yes. They they didn't and, and and you know uh, Mr. Brown told me this when I went to camp. Yes, he's like, look, we were going to draft you. Yes, right, but you were so, you know, you weren't you weren't sure what you wanted to do as far as basketball, so we didn't want to make waste the pit. But you're a high value free agent. Yes, so they brought me in. Wow, they brought me in, man. Wow, and and the reason why I even went. Chad, because he, the coach called me that night, yes, sir. apologizing to me that wow. they didn't draft me. Okay, I had forgotten all about it. I had a damn forty OE <laughs> on my table, <laughs> drinking it. Chad, for real, this God's honest truth. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot about it, and the phone rang. I picked it up, and he was apologetic. I was like, "What?" what, what, what oh, he said, "Oh man, we we were going to do it." But he explained the whole thing, right? Yes, yes. So I ended up going. And he knew, oh, what's my man name? What's, what's, what's your, what was the strength coach, the little dark-skinned guy, muscle-bound dude? At that he time, was good friends with him. Huh? No, because our strength coach at that time was Buddy Morris. No, not Buddy. The other guy who came in with Godfrey, I believe. Oh, uh, yeah. I, 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 he was, he was, yeah, I know who you're talking about. His, his name's on the tip of my tongue. I can't even call it, brother. I know you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, he was always he was always around him. Yeah, yeah. And the coach, the coach, because he, he's from Cincinnati. Okay. And the coach just so happened to know him. Okay. And he was like, look, he's going to work you out. He's going to get you ready for minicamp. Yes. You know, so that's that's how everything started, man. Wow. You know what I mean? And yes. I had... I had opportunities to, to to at least try out for teams overseas, man. Yes. But I, I I got talked into doing it. You know what yeah. I mean? And which which was you know hell, it was the right choice. Yeah. But I'm gonna be honest with you. I wish I would have followed my love, though, bro. You okay. know, basketball was 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 my love. Gotcha. I was I liked football heavily. Yes. But I loved the hell out of basketball. Understood. You know? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I, I I remember we had the uh, the uh, I think your agent had a house on Forbes and Fifth Avenue or something, and, and we yeah, had and yeah. we had that send off party for you. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God! And that and then oh after, after that, I kind of like lost touch with you. So you so you go to camp. How long are you at camp? I went to mini camp. Yes. But then I came back. I think you went home. Yes. For the summer. So I went to mini camp, then I came back and was waiting. Okay. I was on campus waiting. Okay. Right. And then I moved, you know, I no, what I did was pack all my stuff up. Okay. Come back later and uh, went to the main camp. Okay. You know what I mean? I got there and I'm looking around and you know, even though I played football, Ken. Yes. You know the mystique. Oh yes. 
Yeah. I'm on there and I run into, because it was Kenny Anderson. Boomer was the starter, but Kenny Anderson was still there. Yes. Giving out financial advice to all the football players. Um, um, Anthony Munoz. Yes. Oh, yeah. And you know what's so crazy about it? I came in, I was 260, right? Yes. I came in. I came in, Kev, and I I met Anthony, one of the nicest people in the world, right? Okay. And I'm looking at his, I'm looking down at his head, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, wow, this this is just trippy, man. Yeah. But it, it was just a funny thing, man. I had a good camp, yes. but then the numbers game, because they kept coming, and th- th- here's the thing. They kept saying, hey, man, we know you didn't play any football in college. Yes. And that's where you learn how to be a football player as mm-hmm. far as in the NFL. Mm-hmm. He said, but be patient with us because we're going to be patient with you. Yes. Right? And it was this cat, this cat they drafted. I think it was second or third round from Michigan. He was a defensive tackle. Okay. Right? He was holding out for money. Okay. And it looked like that he was going to hold out into the season. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the coach called me in. Like, yo, you expendable. It was just like that. Wow. Like, look, no, look, yeah, we said we were going to keep you, but we need to bring in a defensive tackle because we don't know when he's going to come. Gotcha. I forgot the name of this guy. He was a defensive tackle from Michigan. You know wow. what I mean? And, and, you know, me, I was young, and it was just a blessing just to be there. Yeah, yeah. And, and I didn't really feel the full con. Uh, the whole thing until I went back to pit to finish up because I had two classes to finish up. Yes. You know what I mean? Which I, if I didn't do any sports, I would have done that. Right. Yeah. But I was a year, I went to pit, had money in my pocket. Yes. One class in, in, in the, in the first semester yes. and one class in the second semester with money in my pocket can. Yes, sir. Shit was crazy. It yes. was crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> It was crazy. So that, but it was fun too. So that didn't that didn't work out. And then when did the idea of law enforcement kick in, brother? <laughs> I think to be honest with you. Yes. What well, uh, let me just say this. Yes. I should have I should have continued to keep trying to go somewhere for basketball. Okay. I well, wish well, I would have st- did that, but I stopped. Okay. Who who was it, who was advising you at that time? Who was like a mentor to you at that time that you could bounce stuff off of? Uh, really, my father, but he was three hundred miles away. Got gotcha. okay. you, you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So what I did was once I graduated, I went home for maybe six, seven months. Yes. Then I moved back to Pittsburgh. Okay. Right. And I was still in my early twenties, man. So definitely, I was I was able physically get ready for basketball to go overseas somewhere. Yes. But, you know, didn't know the right people, this, that, and the other, whatever, whatever. It just didn't work out. Yes. So I'm like, look, I'm going to get a job. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I started working at Schumann Center. Shout out to Schumann Center, my first yep. job, bro. Yep. And uh, just working with juvenile uh, kids and all of that. And, you know, started working there and just started just next thing I know I was approached by um, the police chief for the, for the uh, public school. And he was like, no, we looking for big guys. So what's up? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And yeah, I did. Yeah, look, I love Schumann, yeah, yeah. but it was more, it was more money. Got you. And that's how I got into it. Right. So, I did that for six years. Okay. And what ended up happening was my wife, she graduated from Pitt as an engineer. Yes. Right? And she she went on a visit down here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay. And liked it. No family and nothing down here. Okay. She liked it. And my youngest, I mean, my oldest was born. This, You know, this is in 92. Right? So my oldest son was born. Yes. And she was like, yo, we moving down here. I had to listen to the boss. You gotta listen to the I boss. I was doing I was look, I was listening I was doing it kicking and screaming now. Yeah, to be yeah. honest with you. Because <laughs> I always 
I was always used to, you know, but then my father said, well, look, you know, do you want to be with her? Yes. I said, yeah, yeah, I do. All right. Then you know what you need to do. Gotcha. So I came down here and I started my own security business. Okay. Right. Okay. Right move, wrong place. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Because Demetrius, you know, Demetrius was my best friend. He was like my brother. Yes, so sir. we was always yes, in contact and he was living in, uh, he was living in, in, in uh, Brooklyn at the time. Yes. And he had a recording studio in Manhattan. Okay. And he had a label. Okay. You know what I mean? And he he, he managed uh, rappers and singers. Okay. And so I, what I was doing, I would travel up to New York. Yes. When they had, and, and different places. Yes. Right? And acted as security. Okay. Bodyguard. Wow. That's what I did. Wow. You know what I mean? But what I understood was I had to grow up. Yes. Because the move I needed to make was if I was going to do that, you know, get into that real heavily, I had to be in New York. Yes. I'm living in Raleigh, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I got a family, man. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And I talked to Demetrius about it, and he wanted me, oh, man, no, I got you. I said, I know you do, but this is my family. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, my dad was always there for me and my brother. So I'm like, all right, I can't, I can't do no less. Yeah, yeah. So I gave it up. I gave it up. Wow. And now I've got to look for something. Yes. Because yeah. that was my freedom. I had free time to do it. So i got to look for something. Okay. And I was in the library looking for federal jobs, as a yeah. matter of fact, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Filling out applications, right? And I ran to a gentleman. I believe his name was Mr. Roberts. Okay. And he had a radio program. He was friends with the the the, the current that sheriff at the time, yes. John Baker. John Baker played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay. Right. And if you if you go into the history, John Baker, he was from Raleigh. Okay. But he was a monster on the field. He was six seven with big giant bat with, uh, a baseball man hands, right? Yeah, yeah. He's the one who uh you know the famous uh photo of Y. A. Tittle. Yeah. Bloody and all that. Yeah. John Baker John Baker did that to him when he was at Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when he was because he, he played for Pittsburgh. That's John Baker did that to him, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So he told me, he said, Listen, what do you feel about law enforcement? I was like, Hey, I need it, you know, I need work. Yes. You know what I'm saying? He said, I got a friend, he's looking for for good people, let's such as yourself. Are you interested? I said, yes. He gave me his card and he told me it was, you know, the sheriff of the county. That's where I was deputy at. Yes. And I filled out the application and maybe about, because I was old, unloading trucks from 10 to 6.30 at Walmart, 24-hour Walmart. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So yes. I was, you know, I, understand, I was humbled. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, uh, they got in touch with me, did the background, everything. Yes. And next thing you know, I'm I'm in the academy, man. What? 1997. Yeah. Now let yeah. me now let me ask some personal questions. So because you are so tall, how do they how do they how what kind of car did they have to give you? <laughs> I drove I drove I drove a crown a crown Vic. Okay. With you the, know, with the seat know. pushed all the way back. <laughs> oh yeah yeah no doubt no doubt. Crown Vic. <laughs> Then I had an expedition at one time. Okay. And then I ended my career career with a um was it a Yukon baby? Yeah, all, you know what I mean? all big vehicles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yep. now so your your first your first uh, uh I guess your first ride along, right? And the first time you step out of the car, what does someone say to you about you your size in terms of being a sheriff's deputy? All right, well, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Yes. And I went ham, but I'm just going to share this with you because yes. you're my man. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm riding. Well, the first ride along, Yes. we were still in the academy and it was a murder. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So I was in I was in my, you know, in, in, a, in a suit at the time. But then yes. the, the second one, I was being trained. It was field training. So I'm getting... Uh, even though it was easy because I'm coming from law enforcement, so it was pretty easy. Yes. So they was about to let me go and, and get me in my own car and we're going to go from there, right? Yes. 
you know, one thing that most people don't understand in North Carolina is North Carolina is favorable to the black people, but also it's a mean place for black people too. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Got you. So it's in the South, bro. And yo, look, Michigan is bad for black people too. Yeah, yeah. I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna get into that. Yeah. But <laughs> but the thing about it was I get out the car that, you know, me and, me and my uh, training office, we get out the car and we come in to back up somebody else's domestic. You know, yes. the domestics yeah. are the worst things to go to. Okay. You know what I mean? So you don't know people's temperament and, and a lot of people get shot and killed in domestic. Yes. So I get out, you know, we, we pull up, they out in the yard, is is a bunch of uh bunch of white folks. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And they you know, they, they going back and forth at each other, right? Yes. I get out the car. I swear to God. Yeah, yeah. And I don't use I'm I'm doing this for you. I don't use this word. I've yes, never sir. used this yes, word, sir. right? Yes, sir. I get out the car in unison. Yes. They looked at me and they said, Oh my God, that's a big ass nigga right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's real. Yeah. Now yeah. now I'm heated like Yes. I'm not going to let no, you know, no white person call me that word out of my name. Yes. But I got to stay professional, Ken. Yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And <laughs> I'm going, I said, what you say? Uh-huh. And, you know, they, you know, they coward. They ain't say nothing. Yes. Then the old lady looks at him. He said, you a big ass nigga. What do you mean? What'd he say? <laughs> 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 Man, all I could do is laugh. Yes. Yes. Now, now I'm thinking if if they give me a reason to arrest them, they going to jail. Yes. You hear me? Yeah. <laughs> so we sitting there and we going through the whole thing. Yes. And they telling me this 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 is my introduction to it, yes. where I knew I had to take over the scene. Got you. I wasn't going to do it in this particular situation, but when I was on my own, I was going to be my by myself a lot. Yes. Right. So. We going through the whole thing, and they now they fronting. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because they know I can't do anything, so I'm trying to get information from. And they like talking to the white deputy. Hey, excuse me. Talk to him. Yes. You know what I mean? Talking about me. Yes. You know what I mean? So I'm heated. So I got to raise my voice. Yes. I got to like, yo, I'm pointing fingers. Yes. And I'm, you know, and and I'm telling. And they ain't gonna do a thing about it. Now I'm mad, kid. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm, I'm walking out of my professionalism. Uh huh. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Because first and foremost, one guy, white guy, chuckled. Yes. You know what I mean? And my, one of my one of my deputies chuckled. Yes. You feel me? So I know where he coming from. Yes, sir. So I knew I had to actually establish establish myself with the people there. Yes. And with these deputies by my side, absolutely. And and I went in there and I toned it down, took over my professionalism. But I was like, "You going, you going, what you going to do is what I tell you to do." Yes, sir. Yeah, that, that's the tone I took. Yes, sir. And they did. Absolutely. They did. Good for them. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and that, that's the whole. Just, just, I just wanted to share that with you. No, but no, it thank makes you. no difference. It makes no difference. Because hate is hate, bro. Yes, it is. You know what I'm saying? And and you and what I know, what makes me angry about it is they say that word because they know they feel deep down it will hurt me yes. because they feeling defenseless because they can't do nothing to me. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes. You no, know, so you know, like I said, I just wanted to share that with you. No, no, man, I, I, <laughs> man, listen, I thank you, and I, and I, listen, I know this is going to be a part two because you had over thirty years as a law enforcement officer. So well, there's I, no doubt about it. So no I, can, I can only imagine the stories you have to share and the stories that you count you're constantly recounting in your mind. But I, I just want oh, to yeah. say, brother Keith, thank you for your service. Thank you for always remaining and being safe and being the utmost professional. I, I never had to look on CNN and see that there was Keith Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Oh my but, you God. Know, it's, it's, it's no it's, joke it's, out there. It's, no, it's not, man. It's not, yeah. you know, I, and I could say that I really retired at the right time because yes. a lot of, a lot of good people, you know, you know, they make you, 
they make us feel like we need to make a choice. Yes. You know what I mean? And and my thing is, you know, I grew up in the hood. I grew up around, like I told you, I gave you background about my father. Yes. So I know brothers who choose a life of being criminals. Yes. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they don't care. They trying to get, you know, get the job done. So what do I do? What do I do? I'm here to do a job. Yes. I'm not here to take sides. Yes. You know, that's why I kept using the word professionalism because Absolutely. when you're a professional, you just do your job. Yes. You know what I mean? And what I what I did over the years was if I can help somebody out, when yes. I understand that they did break this law, but they might be a victim of circumstances, I'll help them out yes. if I can. Got you. I won't ignore but I'll help them out. Yes. You see what I'm saying? I got you. And it's not because I want them to be my friends. Hell no. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because, <laughs> look, I had people in my lifetime, man, who helped me and yes. didn't have to. Yes. You know? So I, that's the kind of person I wanted to be. I love it, man. I love Brother Keith, this, man, listen, man, I'm so glad we had a chance to talk. We're going to keep going for a minute, but I just wanted to tell you again, <laughs> thank you for your service. And, oh know, yeah, man, no so, doubt, man. So, so here we are, some thirty, thirty-five years later, and now I'm, be, I'm really beginning to understand the whole complete Keith Armstrong, man, good brother. And you know what's so funny? I, and I don't know the saying, but they, it, it's something like, uh, youth is given to the young, something like that. But <laughs> it's, wa it's wasted on the young. That's thank what you. It is. It's wasted on the young, <laughs> man, brother. Oh man. Yes, sir. That's yes, crazy, sir. man. That's crazy. Yes, but I, I, man, I just thank you for you going through all that you went through. Thank you for sharing that part of the story. And I, and I know that you've got more to share. So we're going to take a break real quick, and we're going to. Okay. And, I, and I want you to tell everybody your podcast that you do okay. with your brothers called Strong Perspective. And where can they find that? Yeah, it's a Strong Perspective podcast. And where yes. we are, we we on our. It, it, it's it's the same. It, the YouTube channel is by the same name. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and right now we've been up and running for the last uh, four months. Yes. And guys, you know, but it, there's probably about nine or so videos on there. Okay. We've been going live for the last five, five episodes. Yes. Because you get more authenticness Absolutely. when you go live, you know? Absolutely. And the thing about it is just, just real quick, we give our people, uh, to give people opportunity to hear their own voice. Yes. And you got to think about that to understand what I mean. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you respond it. Yes. And it's emotion that goes along with it. Yes. Now, now, how do people uh, stay connected to you, Keith? Um, I, you know, look, I'm on Facebook. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, uh, now the guys who you know get in touch with me through Facebook Messenger, yes. you know. I, oh, let me just let me put this out here ahead, because man. you know you, you're definitely going to be a guest, Cam. All right, you know what I mean. Yes, sir. You to share your story whenever you get time because I know you're busy, but whenever you get time because I think you would give us a very great episode. Okay. You know, um, just let everybody know this to message me. Okay. On Facebook. And what I'll do is, you know, um, I'll hit you back. Yes, sir. And if yeah. you want to be on, if you want to be on, you're more than welcome. Awesome. You know what I mean? Awesome. You know, so, uh, look, this is grassroots. Of course, I, you know, I can hit you with the, you know, I'll be on such and dot, 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 and da, 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 da. I haven't done that yet, Cat. Gotcha. You know what I mean? This is, <laughs> that's real. Yeah, yeah. But, you know that is what it is right now. I'm having fun with this. This this is your this is your first foray into the entrepreneurial uh, uh, aspect of it all. So we're gonna wish you nothing but success, though, man. Nothing but success. Definitely. But yes. listen, and, in, in, yes, sir. In all of your career, what you know, both both as a basketball player, short-lived football player, career officer, have you had any regrets? Anything that you wish you could have done differently? I, I kind of mentioned it as far as, you know, from the sports perspective. Yeah. Um, I kind of mentioned it for, as far as basketball. Um, I, in my heart, I felt like I gave up too easily. 
Yes. That's why I, you know, I had bad knees. I had both my knees replaced because I continued to play even though I was overweight and mm-hmm. I played just as hard as I did in college. But as far as Rick Brett is concerned, brother, yes. to be honest with you, yes, sir. Um, on a personal point of view, yes. The only regrets that I have is not spending more time with the people that I love. All right. Well said. You know what I'm saying? Well said. Yes, and, sir. And, and, and here's the thing. I try to spend all that time with them anyway. Yes. You know what I mean? So they get tired of me, but it's still not enough. <laughs> Got you. You know what I'm saying? Got you. You know, I, I think I also mentioned that because, you know, I, I mentioned Demetrius a couple times. You yes. know, he passed away. Absolutely. And Everybody who knew him, he was an energetic spirit. He was one of one of the best people that I've ever met. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's flaws included, which everybody has flaws. Yes. But I hate the fact because when I retired soon after, the pandemic kicked in. Yes. And my plan was to go see him and spend a lot of time with my brother. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because, mm-hmm. like I said, it, it, here's the thing, that everybody who knew him knew that our relationship was what it was. Yes. You know what I mean? Even though we had separate lives, we did everything, but we knew each other's uh, children. You yes. know, we're uncles. We're uncles to, to their, you know, their children. Yes. And, 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 you know, their loved ones. And that's my regret, man. I'll okay. be honest with you. Okay. To be perfectly honest, that's my regret. I got you, man. I got you. So, so we're gonna use the crystal ball real quick. Three years from now, where are you with the with the podcast? Where are you with any of your other entrepreneurial ventures that you're thinking about? Where are you three years from now? Well, three years from now, what you're going to see is you're going to see more episodes of great people. Yes. You know, I hate to use this word regular people, but okay. you're going to see at least a thousand different episodes of people that have something to say. Yes. Got you. You, you see what I'm saying? Got you. I, I, I want to say, I want to kick in the financial thing, but I can't, yeah, because what for me, for me, this is something coming straight from my spirit. Okay. You know what I mean? Got you. Because... I think what I think about you and your podcast is I love what you do. I always followed you on Facebook. I always Thank saw you. the different things that you were doing. Thank you. And that's your spirit. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And, and I can see the smile on your face. I can see that <laughs> in your eyes. So, bro, when I say these things, yes, sir. it's going to be, I'm shooting for a thousand videos. Okay. There's going to be some repeat occur, you know, repeat guests, but yes. a thousand videos of real, loving, authentic content. I love it, man. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And as far as other ventures, bro, I'm getting into the apparel, you know, okay. T-shirts. Yes. I'm going to start yes. wearing them on the podcast. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? I have different ideas. My son, he he's, he's into the clothing business. You know, okay. he... He finished playing basketball overseas now. Okay. He, that that's his that's his love, designing clothes. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. You know, his his book anonymous booganonymous dot com. Booganonymous dot com. Does. Okay, cool. Yeah. And I'm going to get him to design the, I got two concepts in my head. Yes. To design these things for me and then I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna just go for it, man. Listen, and, I would love to have your son on the podcast, man, to talk about how you were as a father raising him. Ah, and and, 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 look, and look. how's he doing with his entrepreneurial venture, huh? What? what? Hey, look, Chad. <laughs> yes, sir. Chad, I, you know, I was, look, I was a hard man, but I, I was know a that's, man. I know that's right. <laughs> listen, if you was my daddy at 6'9", listen, daddy, what do you want me to do and when do you want me to do it? <laughs> look, I, I, I'm proud of him yes, because sir. he was a, you know, he was a good man. Yes, sir. See, he didn't love basketball, but he was talented. Yes, sir. And he was blessed. He was blessed to, to play in college. Yes. And the thing about it was, you know, he was always 
hovering around, uh, you know, on a roll. We never had to worry about those things. Yes. You know what I mean? And you know how sons are. They want independence. Yes. You know, so that's what he's, he's in the middle of that process. Okay. Cre- creating his own independence. But that's another program. Brother. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you know, yes, sir. But, but, but like I said, it's just, you know, just trying everything, bro. Okay. You know what I mean? Because, yes, you know, I got a little 14 year old. Yes, sir. You know, he's trying to get into, the, he, he loves, he loves basketball. Gotcha. So what I'm going to do, you know, is give him the best that I can. Got you. You know, and, and I have time to do it. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. You know how they got mama's boys? Well, yeah. he's a daddy's he's a daddy's guy. That's all you know right. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong yeah, with I, that. I was blessed with that. I yes. lost the first one, yes. which wasn't that, wasn't that bad, but I did lose the first one. But the second one, yes. he came to me. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> Going to raise him right. But, man, Brother Keith, we could just talk endlessly, man. I, no I just, doubt. No doubt, bro. I just thank you for the podcast, for being on as my guest. I thank you for sharing your story. And I'm always praying for your safety, man, because I know it was no joke those 30 years being out there. And that, that's going to be part two when we ever get a chance to reconnect on that one, man. But, uh, <laughs> hey, look, yeah, no, more than welcome, brother. But, more than welcome. Just, listen, just let me know. Absolutely. But consider it done. I would love to come on your podcast and oh. chop it up with you and your brothers. Oh, yeah. And and, and it's got to be soon, Cab, because yes. I'm going to let you know, you know, uh, what, what I'll do is you just give me a date because we, we're on every Friday at gotcha. 730. Gotcha. Yeah. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. You know, yeah. but, hey, look, let me tell you, I, I'm, I'm just going to shout you out real quick, man, yes, because, look, you. Yes, sir. I've always in, enjoyed your energy. Thank you, man. Thank you. You know, from when we was little pups, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Your energy, because yes. you got to think about it. In tower, when we was in, and when I was in Tower Steve, me and I was on the same floor. Yes. Because when it was time for showers, we would always run into each other. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Look, look. And you was Diesel. I'm gonna put you out there. You was Diesel. <laughs> looking, look, looking in the mirror at seven o'clock in the morning and, and, and mind yourself. I said, look at this dude. <laughs> Man, brother, but, listen, I can't do that no more. I look in the mirror like, oh, this is the best summer body they're going to get with the stomach out. <laughs> but but like I said, I always, you know, I've always enjoyed your energy, man. You, you. You're, you're a great human being, brother. So, Thank you, brother. Look, if nobody, look, I know people tell you that all the time, well, put me in line with them. Uh, you know what I mean? Br- brother, I am humbled by your kind words, man. Thank you, beloved. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So one more time, Keith, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the every Friday live, every, right? 7.30, 7.30 on our YouTube channel, Strong yes. Perspective Podcast. Yes, sir. And also on Facebook. Yes, sir. So you're, you, you know, if we're friends on Facebook out there, if we're friends, you're, 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 you're always able to catch us at 7.30. Excellent. Brother Keith, man, let let's stay connected. Let's keep up the good work. Let's let's root for one another because we've got to do that yes, for sir. all the black and brown folks, brother. There's no, there's no doubt about that, all bro. Right. Brother Keith, all nothing right. but love, man. We'll talk in text in a minute. All right, all right, peace, man. Peace. Yes, sir. That concludes another episode of the Entrepreneurial Enclave with Kevin Wortham. The podcast that focuses on building, maintaining, pivoting, planning, and investing in you, the entrepreneur. We hope you found this episode informative and enlightening. If you have any questions or comments about any of our episodes, please call 609-731-9311 or email Kevin at minding-our-business.com We look forward to joining us for our next one. Until next time.